Hi everyone, welcome back. If you haven't already done so, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button right now. I'm back with another video as part of my Python tips and tricks series and uh, my regular viewers know, and if you watched my last video, you know that I talked about annotating your images using Label Studio. And this is almost a continuation. If you don't like Label Studio, think of this as an alternative. You can focus on this, especially if your images are digital pathology. Even if they're non-digital pathology, of course, they you can go through the tools that I'm gonna show you and see if that's going to be useful for you. Also stay tuned for the next video where I'm gonna show you another way of annotation, which is my second best method that I should say after Label Studio. And because that one I'm gonna show you in the next video is integrated as part of ImageJ. So if you're used to ImageJ, then that can be useful for you. So let's go ahead and uh, understand QPath a little bit more. And for that, let's go to the QPath's website. And then, uh, so I can show you how to download this on your desktop and then continue from there. So just go ahead and uh, Google search for QPath. If not, uh, look for the link under the description down here uh, under this video. And uh, the QPath, well, it stands for Quantitative Pathology and Bioimage Analysis. So it is not just an annotation tool. It has a lot more tools built into this software package. So if you are, uh, if you want to explore that, go ahead and go through the documentation. So this video is not a QPath tutorial. This is solely focused on using the annotation functionality that's available in QPath so you can uh, annotate your images or label or get labeled images for your machine learning purposes. So I have downloaded this for Windows because I am working on a Windows system. So of course, the good thing about this is it works on any operating system out there. I've already downloaded, installed it, pretty quick process, and there you go, this is the interface. Now let's go ahead and get started. So. The process starts by creating a new project. So let me create a new project and let's go ahead and do that on our desktop, QPath folder. I'll just create a new project. If I just say select, it will throw in a message saying directory must be empty because it is looking for an empty directory to store all the information about this project. So let's go ahead and create a new folder. I'm gonna call this my project and let's select the folder. So now, it knows exactly where to store all the information. So let's go ahead and get started by adding images. That would be our second action. So add the images. So you can drag and drop images right here. You can actually define a few more things about these images, but it'll ask you anyway later on. So let us open our QPath directory where we stored images. In this case, I only have one image, but you can have multiple images. So let's go ahead and drag that one image that I have here, and I am going to click import. So all your imported images will be shown here. In this case, I have one image. So if I double click, it's going to load that in the viewer. And if, I, if it is the first time, it's going to ask for any missing information. So first of all, set image type. And this image is a bright field HDAB uh, image. So I'm gonna select this, but if you have any other aerial photography or something else, go ahead and just select other. It doesn't matter at this point. These things matter if you wanna use the other analysis tools that uh, QPath offers. So let me go ahead and select that. And there you go, now I have my image. Let's get started with annotation. As you can imagine, annotation uh, tools, uh, you can just explore the menu up there, but these are the tools that are there for annotation. So if you click on one of these, for example, when I click on this, this starts the annotation process, but let's go ahead and do things in a methodical way. Let's, after image, let's, by the way, after project, you can click on image to get information about this specific image. And when you click on annotations, this is where you can define your annotation. So uh, this is, was the last one that I had. You can actually right click, add a class. I can call this class, uh, let's say nuclei and you can add a class for background if you want, but uh, this is how you can add multiple classes. So let me remove the nuclei. I just need the positive. So in this case, my goal is to label all the brown ones and then everything else is background. So only the brown ones. So background is zero, the brown ones are 255 or one or whatever the non-zero value is. So that's the idea here. And let us go ahead. I selected this tool. You can select any of these drawing tools. I selected this one that says brush tool. And also if I just if I just paint here, it's going to be pretty big. 
I am going to control this to a smaller size, decrease the size over there, and let's go ahead and start with one of these. You see, it's already pretty big right there, and let's go ahead and start annotating. And this is where you need to be very careful, right, in terms of getting the borders right. Insights are easy for machine learning. It's the borders where it gets confused. So let me go ahead and do that, and let me go ahead and add a couple more, yeah? And by the way, I am not filling the insights. Uh, let me decrease the area a little, let's say a little bit more so you can see exactly what I'm trying to achieve. Okay, let's go ahead and draw a couple more. By the way, all of these are right here. So there you go. And uh, you can visualize all of them at once if you want, but let's focus on drawing a couple more and let me go all the way down and there you go that is another one I mean, it makes annotations easy if you have a very small pen right and now i can just go back and i can select all right there let me zoom in and i can go to for first thing first uh, i think it's under objects annotations go ahead and fill holes it should fill all of them that's why i didn't bother painting the inside regions, I just bought, uh, focused on painting the edges and then fill holes. And the other thing is I just don't want like circles. I want them to be filled for semantic segmentation. So I can just go to tool, uh, sorry, view and fill annotations. So now you can clearly see how the annotations are uh, showing up right there. So go ahead and do this multiple times uh, for to annotate all of your images. And you do have tools I'll focus on that in my next video on a different toolkit, but go ahead and explore here. You have tools to actually, uh, where is it? Uh, I think there is a machine learning classify. You go to pixel classification, you can train a classifier using random forest, for example, and uh, classify this entire uh, image. So you can get like some idea in terms of, okay, how, where are these uh, nuclei or this positive class? and then go ahead and edit those. So in a way, what I'm trying to propose is use Random Forest as your level one segmenter to segment all the regions of interest. Obviously, it's not going to do an amazing job. That's why you need to go back and use the eraser tool to go ahead and erase certain regions. I'll show that process in the next video, but for now, let's say you annotated all the regions that you're interested in, and now you want to export this. How do you do that? Uh, again, you can export, uh, ex explore a few of these in terms of how to create regions of interest, how to export those regions of interest and all that stuff. But I found a script online. In fact, I have, uh, I will provide that as part of uh, when, I, when I share this with you guys. That script is this one right there. And let me go ahead and open the script so you can see exactly how it looks like. You can edit this if, I mean, it's easy to edit, but uh, there is nothing, no reason to edit or doing anything. I can just take this uh, script, drag it onto the image and it opens up a screen and you can run the entire, all the images. You can just run for the entire project uh, or the image that you just opened here or the image that you just selected here. So let me go ahead and hit run. It's going to select my image and it's going to export all of these annotations. Oh, I may have done a mistake, which we'll find in a second. So if I open this annotation, you see in my project, it created another folder called ground truth because I ran this script. That's what this script does. It creates a folder called ground truth and it dumps the images and corresponding masks in here. If I open this, I may not see much of anything. Let me adjust the bright. Oh, I thought I made a mistake. But since we only have one class, I think it, it, it uh, got it right. But you see how we are labeling them as instance labels. Of course, if you want semantic labels, just uh, assign 255 uh, value to all of these, but these are all instant, instance labels, which means each object has a unique number, zero, one, two, three, four, or something. And now you're all set for your object segmentation. Now, why did I say I made a mistake? So you don't, uh, uh, you can correct it. If I have another class, for example, let me go ahead and add another class. I don't know, I'll call it something. And then I add a few more object under that class. Now I can go back here, I have to, not I can, I should be doing that and selecting whatever, for example, I, I wanna select the first three and assign it to positive. 
set class. They are below, uh, they are assigned to positive. The other ones I can set class. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I wanted to do that. Set class to the uh, other class right there. And now you can go ahead and export these. Okay, so I think this is uh, this gives you at least a initial understanding of uh, QPath, or at least you now you know that something like this exists, and there are a whole bunch of tools that I really want you to explore, especially if you are into digital pathology. This can be an amazing, amazing uh, software that is free. So go ahead and explore this, and stay tuned for the next video where I'm going to show you how you can uh, do pretty much a uh, annotation. Uh, annotations using a different piece of software that I actually like very much. Uh, so please stay tuned for that one. Thank you guys.